I want to talk about here the process, the willful process of self-effacement, making yourself disappear at will, making yourself inconspicuous at will, using the art of self-disparagement to be effective. These are the strategies, among so many others, for a man who looks like me. Five feet two and a half inches. But I'm 80 years old. I have a big moon face. Ridiculous to look at. Laughed at, mocked, and ridiculed. But none of that bothers me. I rise above all that crap. And that's what I'm advising you to do too. You rise above that crap. You have to know many tricks. You have to be alert and responsive to what's around you at all times. That comes first. You have to examine motives. You have to know the legal aspects of where you're at at all times. And you have to realize there's eyes in the night. You have to be alert and retain things. You have to realize there's eyes in the night. People are watching. People here, you never know who's going to overhear what's being said. It will be used against you. And what I'm vying for, of course, is a willful, rational paranoia. Don't take anybody's word for anything. Check it out yourself. Listen carefully. Be attentive. Be present. Be alert but know how to self-efface and use the art of self-disparagement to take yourself out of a difficult situation. Now, particularly with a woman. I'll take it to her before she takes it to me. In other words, I'll make the statement, look at me, I'm five, two and a half inches, I have a big, she already sees this. I have a big old moon face. I bring it up. I don't want it to come up behind my back and haunt me. I don't want to have to worry about that crap. I don't want to have to walk down the street, look at the street mirrors and the stores and see the difference in height and then have to ask myself continuously, are we visually an item? I eliminate, eliminate all those terrors and fears and he's got to realize he cannot be jealous. He cannot be jealous. Envy is the root of all his problems and pride. We bust him down. Sooner or later, our subject, a short, small man who looks like me, five, two and a half, hideous looking man with a big old moon face, I'm 80 year old. We break him down to where he understands he must compromise. He must make a deal. He wheels, he deals. Honesty is not the best policy for the short, small man. Morality, traditional morality is never the best policy for the short, small man, and on and on. And we teach him how to do that. Or he goes to a Tony Robbins or someone of that ilk to get his castles in the air. His promise is by and by. That's why what we talk about is not popular. It's a hard sell. Strategies for the small, short man is a very hard sell because we're not promising him any answers and no guarantees. Every other self-help Mongol guarantee, guaranteed results. If you do it, I tell you, guaranteed results. What are you, God Almighty? You can't guarantee results. And then what's the disclaimer for it when they fail? You didn't have the right stuff. You didn't follow the rules. That crap, crap, crap. Instead of that, why don't you stand on your own two feet? I could take a Tony Robbins and confront him and challenge him point for point on most of the things he's saying. Point for point. And he couldn't answer me because I am relentless. I'm like a pit bull. I follow the facts. 
I follow what I say fearlessly. And if I have something to say, I will say it to anyone, anytime, anywhere. I have no fear. What the hell do I need to be afraid of? I've been broken by every single insult as possible to take and humiliation as possible to take. What the hell do I care? I'm indestructible. Except, of course, I'm going to die. Sooner or later, at 80, how many more years do I have? And how long is a question a man has to stand up sometime? How long can you live as a coward? How long can you live cowering? How long can you live under the agencies of a hero figure? How long can you live walking around with somebody else's picture pasted on your back, living somebody else's life through vicarious pretense? How long does a man do that until he says, no more, no mas? When does a man stand up? You've got to stand some time. And with the strategies for the short, small man, we'll teach the man. We'll jam it down his damn throat. We'll expose him. We'll chase him down until he has to admit the position he is. And he has to admit there is no other help. There's just a bunch of bullshit out there. We're the only ones who understand this syndrome, short small man syndrome. We're the only ones who understand it. We don't have the answers, but we have the right questions to ask, and that comes first. Right questions to ask, the right probatives, and we'll take it from there.